I've had a bad weekend. Now I'm talking about football. Hello you plonkers and welcome back today to another video on the True Footy channel. Round 10, definitely round 10. Nine things we learnt. Here we go. News popping up all over the league. We're getting to that point in the season now where shit's really starting to hit the fan and I'm loving it. Free or inform, West Coast of shit. We're going to talk about all of these things. If you enjoy nine things we learn, it means the world to the True Footy channel. If you can just leave a like and comment down below what you learnt or have your say in the comments. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get on with the nine things that we learnt from round 10. Number one. Port's Young Stars time is now. This was such a good game to watch. Port versus Melbourne on Friday night footy. We wanted to see if Port could match the barometer, in my opinion. The Ds, who show up every week pretty much. And that midfield that they have are absolute all-Australian superstars. Like Petrarca, Oliver, Viney, Gorn in the middle. Grundy, that is as good as it gets. So for Port Adelaide's midfield to not only match it with these guys, but come out on top with a win was absolutely phenomenal. It's as good as a win gets for Port Adelaide. It's one of the best wins that Port Adelaide have had in years. Zach Butters probably played the best game of football I've ever seen a player of his age play on Friday night. He was absolutely everywhere. Dominated proceedings. He was good in the contest, but he was as damaging around the ground as well. Didn't stop running all day. It was like a knight in shining armor watching him play. I've never had the chance to sit down and watch him really closely and see how he impacts a game, but Absolutely phenomenal performance from Butters. His performance was worth six votes. If I was an umpire, I'd just give all six to Zach Butters because he was clearly the best on ground. But Jason Horn francis had massive moments in this game when the game was in the balance and stars always show up when it matters most. And Horn francis definitely did. Connor Rosie, we know what he can do. He's an absolute star. But yeah, what a performance. What a win against the Melbourne side who were coming hard in that third quarter. And I thought they were just going to overrun uh, Port Adelaide and end up winning this game. But Port Adelaide showed resilience, maturity, and they trust their system. When the game was in the balance, they stood up and got the job done. A monumental win for Ken Hinckley and his power. Number two, North's best efforts ruined by systematic incompetence. Man, being a North fan watching this game, you must have just had the fattest face palm and head shake when your game is ruined by like a some sort of coach or volunteer on the sidelines. As a man that used to run interchange benches back home in Perth, I know that it is a, quite a tricky job. You're trying to communicate to the coaches, to the runners, to the players. So it's all going on. And especially when the game's in the balance like that, you want to have your best 18 out there. But you've overdone, you've overgone the limit. You are over the limit. And for that, Sydney get a free kick and just get a walk-in goal and the game is done. But other than that, North Melbourne were probably the better side. I say that they were probably the better side. Their pressure was higher. They were playing a more exciting brand of footy, in my opinion, especially given how their last sort of six weeks have gone. They're pretty decent on the inside, North Melbourne, but as soon as the ball gets out, they just look very vulnerable. I really like the game from Luke Parker. Errol Gordon continues to shine, and Buddy Franklin had a decent game, as he should, really. He's one of the GOATs. Played on Griff Logue. They've had a bit of a back and forth over the last few years. Buddy came out on top this time. And as bad as North have been, it's good to see Harry Sheasel and Wardlaw having good games and showing aspects of brilliance that North Melbourne fans can get excited to see in years to come. So they played a decent game, North. They were in it right till the end. And then just an incompetent error caused them the four points. Unlucky. What is Sydney doing not being able to just absolutely pump North, by the way? That's another question for another day. We'll learn that next week. Number three, the dogs are not to be slept on. Last week, I was talking about Adelaide as one of the toughest sides in the competition. They love to battle. They love to compete, all that sort of stuff. They beat St. Kilda, who are one of the hardest sides to score against in the competition. The dogs just stroll up to Ballarat and go, all right, we'll have you, Crows. And it wasn't even competitive. I mean, it was competitive, but it was a convincing Bulldogs win. And the DNA of that 2021 side is now there. The runoff halfback has been a lot better. Bailey Dale and Bailey Smith running the ball, moving it by hand. That is now working again. Their midfield, their contested balls are doing some really good things. Bontempelli, everyone knows what Bontempelli does. He's an absolute superstar, top one or two player in the competition for mine. And the forward line's working as well. Ugo Hagen is now a proper AFL player. Norton did some good things. Lob. Pops up for a goal here or there as he does. 
But I've really liked watching Arthur Jones. I've spoke about him a few times on this show, what he has started to bring to this side. A lot of flair, uh, playing with energy and passion. I've really liked what Arthur Jones has brought to the table at the Bulldogs. They're not to be slept on. They're right up there now. Um, and they've sort of picked up where they left off in 2021 with that potential after a shitty season last year. So do not sleep on the dogs. They could be causing trouble in September. Number four, Flag Mantle is back, baby. To think a few weeks ago, I was like, oh yeah, finals are gone, season's done, yada, yada, yada. And now we've beat the two grand final sides back to back. I'm loving life. Forever Frio, baby. Go Frio. It is funny though, the swings and roundabouts of the AFL season, things can turn so quickly after we pumped Hawthorne, we go away to Sydney and put in a great performance and then we come back home, play against a depleted Geelong side, I know they are depleted, but we went toe-to-toe with the Premiers for four quarters and we were the ones that stood out on top in those championship rounds. Fourth quarter, Geelong didn't even kick a goal. That is a very impressive stat for any side and I'm happy that my Freo Dockers can claim that stat, but... All of our success in the last three weeks has come from our contest method. Brayshaw, Sarong, Jago Ramirez playing some really good footy. And Sean Darcy and Luke Jackson right up there with one of the best one-two ruck combos in the competition. Big shock, Matt Tabner's out for the season and we start kicking higher scores. Having Amos, Josh Tracy and Luke Jackson and slash Sean Darcy because they sort of rotate... They've got like this triangle system where they sort of rotate, one will lead deep, one will lead at the ball, one will lead into the corridor, and it stretches out the forward line. And then if the big forwards don't get it, our small forwards are as good as any in the comp, in my opinion. Massively biased. But like Sam Switkowski, Lockie Schultz, and Michael Frederick, I do not have a problem with any of them. If you had those three small forwards in your forward line, I think you'd be pretty stoked. I'm very stoked as a Dockers man right now. Jeremy Cameron's impact was nullified by Luke Ryan, a previous All-Australian defender that gets slept on a lot in this competition. Uh, Hawkins did some good things, but overall we defended really well, moved the ball really well by hand against that Geelong side where they are definitely lacking depth in the middle of the park right now. Like When you have Atkins... I think they had Brad Close in there. Like It's just not the danger field, Guthrie, Duncan, midfield. So it is what it is. We can only beat what's in front of us. We've got the Ds this week, another massive game, and we're flying into it in real good form. Have confidence in the system. Flag Mantle are back. It was this time last year we beat Geelong in Melbourne in sort of a small time frame, and we're doing it again. Flag Mantle is on, baby. Nine Things We Learn is brought to you by Druzy's Athlete Academy, my business, which guarantees results fast for athletes. What Druzy's Athlete Academy is, is a service that guarantees results fast. So if you're going into the gym and you're sort of just going through the motions, you're not getting as much progress as you possibly can. With Druzy's Athlete Academy, I provide you with direction for every set of your program, every session, every week, every set is dialed in to make sure that you're progressing to achieve your goals as fast as possible. If it sounds of interest to you, but you're not really sure whether you want to invest, at the moment, I'm offering a free week trial. You'll receive the full service for a week, and then we can see if you want to build on it from there to guarantee results. There's no BS with my service. It's guaranteed results over time. All of my clients recently have been doubling their strength, massively reducing their 2K time trial times. I've worked with some of these elite athletes that we're seeing come into the AFL right now. So I know what it takes to get to that level. So if you want that free week trial, DM me on Instagram at druzy.athleteacademy and we can get started working together tomorrow. Druzy's Athlete Academy guarantees results every time. Let's get on with the rest of the things. Hey, where was I? (laughs) Number five. Lions always fight to the end. Poor finish from the Suns. I don't think you're going to see this Lions side all season stop for like a quarter of football they can build into every quarter of games and that's what happened against the Suns they were sort of not neck and neck they were slightly ahead and then in the fourth quarter they were like right let's just ramp it up again and they did and the Suns couldn't go with them this week who was the standout star Lockie Neal absolutely dominating the contest no surprise he's a class player Brownlow medalist he can do these things but I was talking about it last week the talent and quality in this side Every week, there's going to be a player that steps up, shines, and wins the game for their team. Whereas Gold Coast, they kick the first goal of the last quarter, and you think, right, game on, let's go. But it's always just the same looks in the midfield. It's always going to be Rao, Anderson, these guys, same stuff every week. And I think a quality outfit like Brisbane or Collingwood or any side like that isn't going to have an issue sort of knowing what to expect from the Gold Coast Suns. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. I think Gold Coast are improving, but they just definitely need some more squad depth. What more can you say about Brisbane? They are as real as the deal gets in this business right now. They're absolutely flying. Another four points, chalk them up. Absolutely flying. 
equal top of the ladder now, I believe, as well. So we could see that 2003, I think it was, grand final repeated, Collingwood-Brisbane, 20 years on. That could be cool. That'd be a great game. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> Would ya? <laughs> Number six, Bombers celebrate a famous win. Hardwick is done. First off, Essendon. How good is a win against a rival club that you haven't beaten in so long? Especially on the stage that it was, the MCG, dream time, massive game, massive occasion. To get up over a rival side in that fashion, a goal with, what, like seven seconds left? Mate, my heart goes out to all you Essendon fans because that would just feel like pure ecstasy. You're having a party, Richmond fans are miserable. Just from a Freo's fan experience, losing derbies and then winning one. Fantastic. Congratulations, Essendon. Good to get back in the win column. Now for Richmond. Man, it's just come out that Damien Hardwick could be stepping away from the job. Now, people were massive on Richmond going into this season. They had really big expectations, and they simply haven't been met. They have plenty of talent on the list, but Hardwick, he's been there for so long now. Like I feel like sometimes it just does get stagnant. Um, and there's no blemishes on his CV as a coach. I mean, a three-time premiership coach is one that will be remembered for millennia. Absolute champion of the game. But he just couldn't get the best out of his players this year and always late in games as well. Like, if you go back through the last year and a half or so, when the game's on a knife edge, Richmond, I think they've lost or drawn almost all of their close games. So if you can't get that last sort of 5% out of your team, you're never going to make it back to that promised land. Damien Hardwick, he's got the best out of this squad three times, won a premiership, and now he's going to walk away. So we'll see what happens for the rest of Richmond's season. It'd be a bit of a weird one for Richmond fans. You've lost to your rivals in Essendon. It's a bit of a weird one for Richmond fans. You lose Dreamtime at the MCG, which absolutely sucks. Then your coach says, I want to leave. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, now we don't have a coach and we're not playing good. But what a champion he is. I mean, it's just going to be a few weeks of a bit of a roller coaster for Richmond, I think. Plenty going on at Tigerland. Future's up in the air as it stands. Let's see how it unfolds. Please edit me nicely today. I've fucking had the worst weekend ever. <laughs> this ought to be good. Number seven. We knew West Coast were bad, but fuck me. <laughs> For more Eagles analysis, see Jesse's video about talking about the Eagles. I don't need to say nothing. <laughs> now I'm in a good mood. Number eight. Darcy Moore makes it hard to score. Get it? Rhymes. He had 10 intercept marks. I think it was 11 and then championship data said no, it was 10. But man, what a game. What a season he is having. I remember when he went up forward and they were like, this guy is not a natural forward. He's a defender. He goes back and just absolutely nails that role. One of the best intercept defenders pretty much ever obviously the game has like evolved in the last 10 to 20 years and that intercept defender is now such an important part of the modern game and Darcy Moore is as good as it gets you got to think as well all of the offense that you see and all of the flair in the middle of the park it all comes from that intercept from Darcy Moore taking that mark and then taking the game on which he loves to do as well taking the mark at speed landing and going and then getting the ball into the middle of the park and using that speed which Colling would have so it all starts at the source and Darcy Moore is sourcing it up right now. So Carlton found it hard to score. Was that all down to Darcy Moore or is it still just systematic incompetence from the Carlton Blues? Because Collingwood, they're always a hard side to play against. So did Carlton improve this week? I'm really not sure. I just don't think... At the moment, they, there's just still players that aren't good enough at that Carlton footy club. That I've always said like the bottom six to eight players that get to play every week, just aren't cutting the mustard. They had a few goals from free kicks as well. So like Jesse said in his Eagles video, the score involvement stat is quite telling because you can tell how a team moved the ball. I don't know what the score involvement stats were for the Carlton game, but I know a lot of their goals are from free kicks. It wasn't really methodical. It's just clunky at the moment at Carlton. Their season can turn around very quickly, but it's not going to happen just by a click of the fingers. It's going to take a lot of work. They have so much more to give Colton, and for whatever reason, they just can't get it out of themselves at the moment. Don't know what's going on there at all. But yeah, their season is slowly, slowly slipping. And number nine, Return of the King leads to a gutsy win. Surprise, surprise! The King is back! Conor McGregor reference. Get it? Yeah, same. Cool. Four goals, eight marks for Maxi King. He's back, and he's kicking straight, which is good. He still flicks the bloody ball over when he walks in, but whatever. He sorted his kicking out, and he had a massive impact in this game. 
GW West went toe-to-toe with St. Kilda for pretty much three and a half quarters. But the Saints, that's a gutsy win, man. That is hard. That was a tough, fought-out win. I really like Jade Gresham's game in this game. He had a good game. Jack Sinclair did some massive things. Like He's considered a half-back, but his impact all across the ground was fantastic this week, and it has been for the past 18 months, really. It was a good response after that Adelaide game last week, because this was by no means an easy win for St. Kilda. So for them to bounce back, another away game against a decent GWS outfit who were really up for this game. And they never really took their foot off the gas. Even if they made mistakes and conceded goals, they'd go again and go again. So it was just like a gutsy relentless display from St. Kilda. And that's what you want to see as a fan, a four-quarter effort. That's what you want to see as a fan, a four-quarter effort where your team gets the job done by any means. And they did that, St. Kilda, back in the win column this week. King is back. Let's see how much of an impact he makes for this St. Kilda side. It's going to be massive. I-M-O. That's going to wrap up nine things we learned from round 10. Before you go, if you could just do something for me really quick, just leave a like, yeah? That's it. And comment down below your thoughts from the round. Druzy's Athlete Academy guarantees results fast free trial period now available so hit me up on instagram at druzy.athleteacademy if you just want to program straight off the bat true footy viewers get 20 percent off using code true footy 20 all caps no spaces at checkout and like skepta in a booth in north london that's a wrap i'll see you in the next video take care you plonkers bye